Hi, welcome to part two of automatic call distribution. We're going to start with talking about the evaluation period. When a call comes in to your queue, you need to evaluate of how to route that call based on your business rules. An evaluation method which applies the business rules to determine how Genesis Cloud will process your interactions. Now you can configure to consider skills or time or just consider available time for agent uh, time in a queue or priority for interactions. The evaluation method chose, chosen for a queue needs to be coordinated with, e with the interaction flow that is created in an architect. The evaluation method does not use language settings in, on, the inter on an interactions. Now, if a language requirement is set on the interaction, it is used to filter the agent before the evaluation and scoring is done. Now, there are two major way, uh, three different ways of evaluating an agent. So the options that you have are A, all skills mass matching, best available skills, or discard skills. So these are the three standard evaluation methods that are available to you. When you select all skills matching, Genesis Cloud only consider agent who have all the required skills. Agent who has been waiting for longest time since the last ACD interaction will be routed for the interactions. So if every agent must have a skills that matches that. Then you have the best uh, available uh, skills. Genesis Cloud will build a list of available agent who have all the required skills it will then put those agents in a sequence by time since the last ACD interaction of that. Genesis Cloud will score uh, uh, scores the top 100 agents based, based upon their average proficiency rating for required skills and select an agent with the highest proficiency available. Last but not the least is the discard, dis, disregard your skills. Basically select an agent, next agent. So in this scenario, Genesis Cloud will transfer the incoming interaction to the agent who has the longest waiting time since their last interaction. Even if the skills assigned to the interactions do not match the skills of that particular agent. Now, there are two type of routing method you have. You got the standard ACD and then you got the Bulls I ACD. This routing method of standard, which will build an initial list of available agent to consider for routing. Now it route interaction to the next available agent and consider the skills as a specified in evaluation method. For example, in this scenario, if I go to my queue and I select the sales queue, which I created, and I go to routing, these are the two, three options of evaluation method we have. All skills routing, best skills, available skills, disregard skills and next available agent. Now, if I do not want to use the standard ACD, I do have the option to choose either bullseye routing or preferred agent routing. We'll talk about more details about them as we go through the course. Bullseye uh, ACD, which is a bit more uh, advanced. This routing method interact with two uh, interactions targeted, targeted subset of the agent with the specific skills. Now, if none of those agents are available within that configured number of seconds, it will relax the skill set and requirement and enlarge the pool. So basically your goal here is that first select group of agent who meets within a certain level, let's say level one. If nobody is available, then select agent from level two. If nobody is available from level two, then select agent from level three and so and so. In a bullseye ACD, we use a concept of ring, and I'll explain that in a bit. So think about think of set of uh, concentrated rings, like the ring on a target or a dartboard. Each ring represents a subset of an agent in the queue. Now, it is possible that on ring number one, you have 20 agent, ring number two, you may have 30 agent, and so on and so on. The innermost ring contains agent with the most desirable skills. So people you want the rod, the call, the fast most, or people who are more expertise into that particular field, you want to put them in a ring that is very closer to, let's say, ring number one. The um, 
Like I said, the innermost ring contains the agent with the most desirable skills, and the next ring has the agent with the most desired skills, and so and so. Now, like that, you can have up to six different rings. While using bullseye configuration, every member of the queue must be assigned a ring number. So if you're gonna choose the bullseye rather than let's say ACD, then you must choose the ring number. Let's go and see how it looks on the configuration page. So here, if I choose the ring bullseye, and you can see those three options that I have is no longer available. So choices that I have first, well, they are available in step number two, but first of all, why do I still have those? Well, let's say in a ring number one, you have 10 agent. Well, first of all, you went to ring one and you have available agent. How do you select among those 10? Well, that's when this will come into picture. So here you got a uh, route all preferred agent for five seconds. You can add a skill set here. Uh, you can then add a more ring and say, these are the people skills to remove on an exit for example then ring number two ring number three ring number four and so and so so like that you can create more ring as you go through this course um, to these configurations you can design a you can you can have a very uh, uh your design could vary to that will meet your needs so, so every requirement may change the number of uh, agent that you need for that particular uh, ring for example one variation is to keep the same skills when progressing from ring to ring, but include agent with lower profic prof proficiency in the skills in each progressive ring. Another variation for your VIP customers to, is to have one or two agent in the first ring who are the most familiar with those customers, like account manager, for example. Then other agent in the second ring uh, who are more knowledgeable enough to help the customer. So for example, I might be responsible for West Coast customers. I'm more familiar with it. I know how to handle them. But then someone from the East Coast might have, might know how to help my customer, but they're coming from a different ring. So for your VIP customer scenario, you, when you assign a ring, you can disregard their skills. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind, you cannot remove language skills when your interact interaction moves from one ring to the next, as these skills are not part of your routing method functionality. Select a bullseye routing option to enable the bullseye configuration as I've shown you. And you can then add up to six different rings. Under the membership tab, you must assign every agent to their respective ring number. Now here, for example, we we have our uh, ring um, queue customer and a routing method. Again, the interface may differ based on that by the time you log in. So uh, this uh, screenshot was a slightly old, but if you want to look at the current one, this is what the current one looks like under general. As you notice, there is no standard or even bullseye option. You got to go to the routing tap to choose that option so by the time you are actually logging into your platform it might even change so always look for the tab routing and then you choose your appropriate uh, ring number so the bullseye option uh, when you enable the bullseye options you will be able to select uh, how many seconds to wait in each ring before you go to the next ring right so sometimes you may want to start with select an agent from the ring number one wait for five seconds if there's no agent available go to ring number two wait for another 10 seconds if there's no available you know you can keep going until ring number six comes into play all right so here it, then you can go to the members and you can assign agent to those members so if i were to go to my current screen i can go to the member and then I can assign the member into that particular configurations. Evaluation and routing combination, sometimes you may need to combine them in order to get the best results. Genesis ACD Cloud will match the interaction with available agent under the two scenario. First scenario occurs when interaction arrives and there are multiple agent available to answer the call. While well, in this scenario, the goal is to choose the most appropriate agent for that interactions. Genesis Cloud calculate an agent score based on the evaluation method and assigned to that particular queue and choose the available agent who has the highest score. 
The score can be based on skills, skills proficiency, or the amount of time since the agent become, became available. Genesis Cloud ACD will filter the agent for eligibility if the interaction has a language requirement as well. So if you take a look at in this scenario, you got the method is all skills matching. So that means you have three different agents. And in this scenario, the first, uh, first one does not match all the skills. As you can see, there's an X. But the sec second two does match all the skills. So now you got two agents with exactly the same skill set. They're available. So next step will be to look at the time, which who has been waiting for longest period of time. So in this scenario, most likely the selection will be the skills uh, agent number three, because if you are go go with the highest score set. If you are going for second scenario, which is the best available skills. The second scenario occurs when there are multiple interaction waiting and agent becomes available. The goal for this scenario is to choose the appropriate interaction for the available agent to pick up the call. So the way Genesis Cloud calculates a score based on how long the interaction has been waiting in the queue and the interaction's priority. Genesis Cloud filters the agent by language requirement and depending on the evaluation method by skills assigned to them. So for example, you got three different agents, they all have the same skills, but each has a different proficiency. And as you can see, the proficiency for this is number 77 versus 34 versus 21. So after doing the calculation, you realize the proficiency is highest is the agent number two. So that therefore the call will be select will be answered to by this agent first because he or she has the best available score rate. So that is calculation. The question is what how does the system makes that calculation? So for example, if I go to my skill set. So let's say I go to skills and I'm going to have created skills. We'll call this uh, Windows. Uh, sorry, let's call it collaboration product. So you assign a collaboration product and you want to assign this to an agent, right? So we go to people, right? So you go to as agent skills and you select collaboration. And you see this, the stars here, that's where you apply a kind of rating, right? One star, two stars. So higher the rating, the more, the more weight it will put into your calculations. So you want to, you know, choose, you want to create your agent and assign them to appropriate skills and make sure that you assign them appropriate star or value that you deem necessary. Now, if you're coming from Cisco world, we used to call that skills based routing, or if you're coming from UCCE enterprise, you usually call that uh, precision routing. Similar concept goes going on here. Okay, so next is a combination. As you can see here, you got a three, a four different agent here. You can combine the language, the skill set, the proficiency rating, the ring number, and you can make a very cumbersome uh, calculations here. So I'm going to quickly walk you through what's going to happen here is in this example, it shows a different combination of evaluation method and routing method that are being used with this within within your environment. So in scenario one, the customer in France is, your, is on your website for the first time and is trying to check her account balance. She has, for example, requested an assistance through your support, uh, support chat on our website. She would like to communicate with someone in French. So the language that they're looking for is French, okay? And you're looking for an agent who's gonna provide support. So incoming interaction requirements that you, you, cre you assign appropriate language skills French, and then you have an associate skills called French support. So you got French skill language and a QNA skills name French support. So the following uh, uh, agent will be logged into the queue with a specific skills, an average proficiency rating, and the ring number and the time based on the SCD uh, interactions. So there are two type uh, two type of behavior that can be used to route the interactions you can either you can either pair either the routing method with any one of the evaluation method for a total of up to six possible combinations
So what's going to happen is, is going to obviously choose, uh, choose the agent with the French language. So all of them has a French language and it's going to choose ACD skills. So in this scenario, what's going to happen is it's looking for ACD and support. So it's going to lower it down to these three. Then it's going to look for with per person with the highest uh, uh, proficiency and then which ring number is coming from. And then if all equal becomes equal, then it's going to look at the time. So at some point there will be a tiebreaker that will say, okay, uh, if everything matches equal, then look at the time who has been waiting for the longest period of time. So once you understand this uh, combination, it, it really gives you a very powerful way of routing calls to your agent. In next part of this video, I'm going to explain each well, how it differs between all skills matching versus best available skills matching and in a different ways. So until then, I'll see you in the next part of the video.